uh, about increased intracranial pressure, okay? As we said very clearly, if you see this butterfly in the center, and you see brain tissue in front, as you see, there is a lot of grains of ecogenicity. If I'm in board, it will be like that. Nothing. But if you, there is brain tissue, you will see very clearly that butterfly, and you will see brain tissue in front. This is very important before you fire the color. Once you fire the color, you will see all the circle of wheels very clear, okay? Now, there is liaising, there is increased velocity compared to the setting here. So, I will increase the scale. The scale here is 33 centimeters per second. If the flow in the venicebal artery or anterior cerebral artery exceeds this 33, it will lead to aliasing. Because of that, I need to increase the scale to get very clear red color <clears throat> for the middle cerebral artery, very clear red color going towards my probe in red and very clear blue color of the anterior cerebral artery away from my probe appear in blue and this is the junction of the internal carotid this is the internal carotid artery bifurcation okay okay and now we talk about the pulsatility index we talk about the optic nerve shield diameter now there is a very important point i need i need to, to start spectral doppler to measure the velocity of pedicellar artery in proper way exactly not only in color i need to know a numerical number number of velocity I will decrease the sample volume size because the mediterranean artery is not too large. Too many will be enough to put in the center of the mediterranean artery and I will put the setting. Here there is some energy. I will increase the scale to get the terminal end of the flow. If I get this flow, this flow is good. I will press measurement, I will press left, I will press with the artery, and I can do auto trace. Okay? Now, concentrate, please, because it's very important. Now, I have very important point here. Okay? I have the big systolic velocity, which is 100 centimeters per second. I have the end of the historic velocity, which is 43 centimeters per second. And I have the velocity index. And I know the velocity index, which is maximum big systolic velocity minus end diastolic velocity over mean velocity. So, by having the velocity index and the end diastolic velocity and the systolic velocity, I can measure, I can estimate the mean velocity. Okay? Right? Okay. There is very important formula, squeezed formula, say that. The cerebral, and we'll see that in lectures, the cerebral perfusion pressure, non-invasive cerebral perfusion pressure, equal. Mean arterial pressure by invasive way. Mean arterial pressure by invasive way. Multiplied by endosolic velocity over mean velocity. Okay? If, uh, il, il cerebral perfusion pressure by schematic formula, equal. Mean arterial pressure by invasive way. Multiplied by end of the historic velocity, which is here 43, over mean uh, velocity, which I can measure, okay? I can estimate, uh, plus 14. So now, and this is formula very sensitive and very reliable compared to the invasive pressure. So you can measure the non-invasive cerebral perfusion pressure, and if you have invasive arterial laboratory, you have the mean arterial pressure, if you subtract cerebral perfusion pressure, from mean arterial pressure, you will get intracranial pressure like this. I will say again, after doing this hemodynamics of the middle cerebral artery, I have here the big systolic velocity, which is 100, and the endosolic velocity, which is 43, and the volatility index. Volatility index, which is 0.83 normal. Volatility index equal big systolic velocity minus endosolic velocity over mean velocity. Okay? So, I, some machine will, um, will give the mean velocity, but in my machine here, no mean velocity. But I can estimate it, because uh, I have the velocity index and I have the mixed solid velocity and the end of velocity, okay? Okay, I will estimate it. I will estimate the mean solid velocity. After that, the non investigated formula say the, mean, the cerebral perfusion pressure equal 
Mean arterial pressure in vessel multiplied by in the diastolic velocity over mean velocity. That's 14. Okay? So I can measure and I can measure and estimate the non-invasive simple perfusion pressure. And by having the invasive mean arterial pressure, I can subtract the simple perfusion pressure from mean arterial pressure. I will get the intra-arterial pressure. Okay, by this, I think we covered all uh, about the intra-arterial pressure, and you will see very clearly in lecture chart.